everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat interview, and I'm talking today with Deepthi. Hello. Hi, Christian. How about you? So folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Um, who am I? Uh, my name is Deepthi Goguri. I'm a database administrator. I live in Frankfurt, Kentucky. I have been a database administrator since about like seven years. Uh, so all my life. Uh, I did my master's in computer technology here in United States at Eastern Illinois University. And after that, I de decided I fell in love with SQL servers and how to manage SQL servers. And that's how I, I plan to become a DBA. And then I'm finally a database administrator. And I fell in love with the community work that everybody is doing. And then I started speaking two years ago. And then here I am uh, in, in a two years of span. I, be, I became a Microsoft Data Platform MVP, and it's really a big honor. It's great. And, and I have to point out that you said one of the, like, the nerdiest things that you can possibly say. I fell in love with SQL Server. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's, you know, there, it's actually a different conversation for a different time. But, uh, you know, I, I, so I, I complained years ago. I was like, like, where in the Microsoft ecosystem of all the DBAs? Like, I worked in data warehousing for years and years and years and was surrounded by, you know, in support teams and analysts and, you know, DBAs everywhere, people that own the data, you know, peered into the data, sliced and diced it for the, org the organizations, our internal customers around that. I joined, get into the Microsoft ecosystem in the SharePoint world. And suddenly I'd like, there's nobody that has the DBA title. It's like, where, where did all these people go? But it's, well, it's great. So let's talk about I know it, one of the questions I always like to ask is like, what it, was your path to becoming an MVP? Like, what was it something that you even knew about the program and that you pursued or did it kind of surprise you? Somebody submitted, what was that journey like? Oh, uh, if I share my story, it's like, uh, um, nobody will expect like, oh, Deepthi, you like, I didn't even know like there are like data platform and VPs out there, at least like, um, so, so I have been a DBA for seven years, right? So until until I completed like a couple of years being a DBA, I realized that there is this platform like PaaS Professional Association of SQL Server that mm -hmm. there is this something known as PaaS Summit. And once I came to know like what is this PaaS Summit and what 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 goes on with it, and I came to know like there are several speakers out there and what are they speaking on. So like I said, I fell in love with SQL Server. I saw so many topics that they are talking about the SQL Server, the latest features that got introduced. So that's how I I came to know that there will be speakers in SQL Server world. Uh, and then I started listening. And then that's when I came to know that there are user groups associated with the past, past association. So I started checking those um, and I registered for a couple of user groups. And then I came to know that every month we have a couple of meetings related to specific specific topics, like for example, the DBA or Power BI. Mm -hmm. So I registered for my interested user group, like DBA. Uh, there is like database administration user group at that mm -hmm. time. Now it has been grown up to like, it, there are like several groups, more than 100. Uh, user groups across the world and every, like most of them became virtual which is a advantage for the people who are we can join anywhere like wherever right. you are you and there really are there and there are events for people that don't know this too like i i was very active for many years within the sharepoint saturday you know ecosystem around that we took the model from sql saturdays and so there are these and that those that was a huge thing and they're so sometimes those events join together, but there really are, if you, if you're struggling to find like a local user group, that is like a DBA specific user group. I mean, there are groups all over the world and virtual groups, as well as in person uh, you know, around this same, you know, aligned with this same uh, skill set. Absolutely. So, so I was like very fascinated looking at the, Speakers talking about the technology very passionately. Um, I, I I used to attend those, 
but i never in my life i thought that i will be in the same stage like them speaking about sequel server it was not in my mind it was a dream to even talk to even say hi to an mvp it's a dream it's a dream come true that's that was my creation like 2 years ago but then something something happened like um i went to dark times in my life um where i like in my previous company i faced um i faced like uh, how can i say i faced a little bit of harassment kind of thing in the previous mm-hmm. company um so it has happened for a couple of years um i went to dark times of my life i lost all my self confidence i i thought like why i am even here because they say like uh, technology is not for women you know when you are trying to share a story and when you are trying to say like this is not the way you do things this is how we need to do that and some people doesn't like it you know because you are being affirmative and you are saying that um this is how we need to do things so that that started like that for a couple of years and i lost all my self confidence um uh, so basically long story short i have been through the dark times of my life for 5 years and i stuck with the same company because i lost all my self confidence i didn't know what i will do if i leave the job i tried to stood up for myself it didn't work um, everybody everybody tried to support the other person hmm. other people out there who tried to sabotage me in the work environment so um it's a very toxic environment i am telling this in public it's a very toxic environment i finally decided to move out of the company but then while i was still in that company i was like in the dark moment like i i felt like i don't want to do anything i don't want to do anything i just want to uh, sleep i i became basically a little bit depressed of what i was going through mm-hmm. so i thought like how many how many years should i stay in this like this is it serving me in any way it's not serving me it is taking me um, more into the dark places where i couldn't spend much time with my kids i don't want to talk to anybody not even to my husband i felt like i wanted to be alone all all the time mm-hmm. so something happened like i finally decided to do something about it i want to shift that negative thought i want to come out of there should be some light out there but until i decide to see the light light is not going to come to me so i have to travel i have to take the steps to see the light so i decided that day to open up the to open up the twitter account just to just for the sake of brent ozar i am sure you know about him he mm-hmm. he speaks a lot about sequel server because i love sequel server i used to follow his blog post and everything mm-hmm. just for he, him to see what he is speaking about i opened up their twitter account and then i started looking at him looking at his post and everything so one day ventos are actually promoted the new stars of data um uh, conference which is a online conference encouraging the new uh, new speakers to come to come to the stage and speak for the first time as a speaker mm-hmm. so that that post actually changed my whole whole career and it made it made me become a speaker so what i did was like i like i said i was in a depressed moment i mm-hmm. did not have the courage to submit but then i thought like somehow i have to i have to take that first step so i decided to submit the session i submitted the session and i contacted the organizer i told them how much it is important to me um how can that actually change my life they they saw the abstract and they liked it and they accepted it and and the beautiful thing about new stars of data is they provide you the mentor because it is very yep. first time you yep. will not have the energy and you will not have the confidence to even right. prepare for the presentation you know nothing about presentations right uh, so they give, they they provided me with a mentor who is debra milkin she is a wonderful speaker and she is a data platform mvp herself she uh, she just gone through all of the preparation with with me and then she supported me as i prepare for my presentation and during the actual day that is my first day as becoming a speaker i am a speaker for the first time so that day she was there with me um supporting me because 
i need someone to be there beside me while i speak in the conference that have given me the immense confidence because i somebody else is there with me along with me who she know about me right she right. was there she's looking out for you and right yeah absolutely cheering me up right yeah. which is mm-hmm. like it seems to be simple but it, it means a lot it means a yeah. lot the oh, first time no, so, I, I just was just I was going to say that you know, I, so having organized a number of events and n- a number of times where we've tried to do like similar to that 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 event where we've made room specifically for brand new people and offered mentors and it's always it, I'm always sad to see how few people I realize it's scary it's something that's new and a, a lot of people it's one of the most uh, uh, common phobias fears of public speaking and there, but it's, it's not as hard as we build it up to be. Um, it, it, not that it isn't scary to, to go and do that and put yourself out there like that. But there is such a great, uh, within all of these uh, uh, sub communities within the Microsoft ecosystem, there is so much support, so many mentors, willing mentors to help people. If somebody is interested, like yourself in moving down this, this path, there are many people that are willing to help. So I'm, so it's great to hear that you took that first step. I mean, obviously it's, it's worked out. Yes. It will take you to places where you would not have been even imagined before. So that was my first presentation. I think I did, I didn't do terrible, (laughs) terrible. Hmm. I did okay on my first presentation, but then what I thought was like, if I stop there, if, if I feel like, okay, this is good. I did my first presentation and I'm done. I'm not going to do that because it was terrifying. Believe me, it was like speaking in front of people. They don't know you. They don't know your story. They don't know how much knowledge you have about SQL Server. But then you are putting in a vulnerable situation where like, hey, I have something to say uh, that I have learned. I want to share with you. So that feeling to be very sincere, it is terrifying. Yeah. I felt like something is going, like my heart is, <laughs> my heart was bouncing hard. And then, but after that presentation, I decided, I still decided to do that more often. So I did it like, I did with intense, like in, in the span of eight months, I did like more than 300 sessions, mm. like more than 300 I was speaking everywhere because the pandemic has actually um, made all the events to go virtual. And that has given me the opportunity. I took my time and I, so you might be asking me, how come you presented at 300 events? Like, how did you even know where are the events, right? So I was, like I said, to come out of that depression state, to come out of the dark phase of my life, I need to have a way like I need to focus my energies completely, hundred percent of my energies into something else. So I choose, I choose public speaking as a way out, as a therapy for me to come mm-hmm. out of that. And it has changed my life, and I will never go back into that phase, back again into the dark times of my life. Now I understood like, um, how can I navigate those those negative energies into the positive energies? So what I did was to make that happen. I I contacted all the organizers. Like I went to the past.org. I took the list of all the user groups. Right now we do not have that, but we have that Azure data community in mm-hmm. Meetup where you can find all the details of the user groups and then you can contact the organizers. So mm-hmm. I literally went ahead and sent the emails to each of the organizers asking like, I'm the new speaker. I want to speak at your event. Please give me the opportunity. And none of them like, None of them told me like, Aditi, you are a new speaker. We don't want to give it to you. Everybody was welcoming. They are looking for speakers. They are looking for the women speakers, especially. And from the, they are, they wanted to also improve the diversity. So they are also looking for the diverse set of speakers. So mm-hmm. everybody was with, like, oh, please come and give it to us. And then once I spoke to them, they, they called me like twice or thrice after that. So it, so sometimes I spoke like, three to four sessions in a day, like different wow. locations. Wow. Like yeah. was the work. If you ask me like, why did you do that much of speaking? Like I said, I need a, I need, I need a therapy, right? I don't want to go to the therapist. I need to be my own therapist. 
public speaking public speaking has become my therapy and in the span of 2 years like i in the span of 2 years i became a stronger person i i could understand who i am and why mm-hmm. i am here that public speaking has actually helped me in many ways it has become a therapy to me in the first place and it gave me peace because i am trying to learn something and share something to the to the community across mm-hmm. the world because other person is learning from my content all all the videos are posted on youtube other people started commenting on how much that content has helped them solve the problem mm-hmm. that gave me like immense amount of peace and yeah. no money can give me that peace no money i can assure you that yeah. and i am yeah. sure you know that yeah it, no it's like a, it, it so i used to run and it did a lot of half marathons one full marathon which i hated it's not for me it's too far uh, but half marathons but you'll get that runner high and and trying to explain running to people and it's very much the same going when you're able to share your own experiences and finding you know tips that you that you've learned through your own work your own development and be able to share those with somebody and it just suddenly you see sometimes I'll share some things and people are like oh, I've done that I've done that share something else and they're like whoa wait a second that changes things for me and have those discussions with people it is like having that runner's high i don't know how else to explain it and so it's it is fantastic and it's and not having been like a formally like a like a teacher you know professionally i've done trainings and things but there are things that i really liked about training what i what i didn't like about being a trainer i did that for different roles throughout my career is all of the time and the work that it takes to build the content, to be able to go and do like a full day or a multi-day workshop. It's a lot of work. I'm not a fan of that part, but then leveraging your work and sharing that out is fantastic. Again, that runner side. So I, I love that aspect. Yes. It will give you the dopamine. Like if you have yeah. an espresso, espresso. <laughs> yeah. After completing each session, I used to have a feeling like having a full cup of espresso coffee it used to give me that high you know <laughs> which is like really well the, there should be a health warning there if you drink a monster or drink uh, some coffee right before you go and speak you know that it could cause heart issues that should be a warning to speakers <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. oh yeah it's it's so it's so wonderful like to sharing share to share the story of mine to other people because um, it's not like people think from outside people they always think like becoming a speaker these people might be magical they ha- they have some abilities which they don't have which is like completely nonsense like we are the normal people and everybody can do that right like you can't be the perfect speaker like the um like the uh like a speaker who never do any mistakes you can't be an expert speaker on the first session it takes hundreds of session we need to give uh, hundreds yeah. of sessions Hun- you need to stand on hundreds of platform and still the learning journey continues but it's not like a destination right. like hey today you became a expert well, speaker it's, it, it's like no it's very much like we're so we're so obviously I mean, public speaking is difficult as i said for a lot of people to to get up the the, the nerve the courage to go and do that But so much of it is, I, I like the phrasing of, the, of working out loud. So it's it's like when you're in elementary school and the teacher says, like, show your work. And all you're doing is you're just speaking to that. I'm showing my work. This is, was my experience. Here's what I have. One thing I was going to say is that another thing is that I, I've seen people who have been in the audience of sessions a couple of times a month. So I know one individual who went on to become an MVP. but started out he would just get very uh, involved and ask questions and share other insights of his personal experience and there's a few of us that it turned out like you should be presenting on these topics as well and he's like no 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 i'm not an expert like nobody's an expert in all things we have depth in certain areas share that depth be you have to be a little bit humble about the things that hey i don't know that question um great thing about being an mvp is if i don't know the answer i probably know somebody who does know that answer and can help connect people but that's another great way of of for people to get involved and to kind of find their their path is uh participate actively in the sessions that you're attending 
and reach out and connect with the speakers around that. At the very least, you build your network, you make connections to help help you solve other future problems. It also that getting that feedback as, as you and I as speakers, I love it when people come and ask questions because I will I will look at and say, I need to make sure that I have the answer for that in my in that slide. I need to fix that. I need to add to that. Or that takes it. That's another entirely different topic and idea for content. And maybe I should even partner with that person who was asking and sharing that that feedback and create that content. So it just opens up a lot of other opportunities for solving problems yes. and serving the community. Yes, absolutely. And it, and nobody is an expert at anything, right? If you know, like, this, this is something I want to tell to the new speakers who want to enter into the speaking, it doesn't have to be in a 300 level session. It can be the basic level session because there are hundreds and thousands of people who wanted to learn those basics and enter into the technology. So when you see like 200 and 300 level sessions, the attract the people who are attracted more to are the 100, 100 level session. They always wanted to learn from the basics, even though they are an expert, they always wanted to go back to right. the basics and then brush up their, uh, you know, fundamentals. Right. Well, that's, so my, my philosophy is most of the sessions that I now present are at the 100 level. They're meant to be broad audience. But when questions are asked and when I have the follow-up conversations after the event, they're always at the 200 or 300 level. It's what, and that's, that's the thing is that there's the content there for that. Like I've yeah. got a, a Viva session that I do that's an overview. It's meant to be broad. Uh, but you know, when people have specific questions into each of the modules, like, hey, I'm prepared. I'd love to have those conversations. But I'd rather cast the wide net, have those broad conversations that lead to those more specific. So, but there's, yeah, there, there, look, there's certainly an art to, you know, presenting full-time and going out and doing these. And, and I, I, you know, congratulate you on, on your path to doing that. And you did a, a smart thing too, is when you have core content, maybe even two or three abstracts of different sessions that you're prepared to talk about for an hour is then go and shop those around. There are user groups that are always looking for speakers um, you know, around the world. Um, and there are, of course, in-person events that are starting up again, but there are so many opportunities. Uh, user groups, local and regional events, of course, the big marquee events, the Microsoft events and other things, they're always looking for new people. So never be afraid to submit to those events. And also most of them are free. You do not right. have to pay anything, right? Right. Yeah. Well, that's the other it thing. It's, a, it's, it. It, it's with so much that having because of the pandemic moving to online, there, there are hybrid options. And so you don't have to worry about expensive flights and hotel and to travel around the world to participate. There are opportunities from your, in my case, basement office. Uh, so to, to participate. Right. Deepthi, really appreciate, yeah, love this story. Congratulations again on becoming an MVP. And uh, Thank you so much. You know, it, it's exciting to, to hear the, the stories and kind of overcoming adversity story as well uh, in that case. But for folks that want to reach out to you and connect you to, what are the best ways to reach you? Um, I'm on Twitter. It's DBN Nuggets is my user ID for the Twitter. DBNuggets.com is my website where I usually blog about the SQL server. SQL Server features like query store, Azure SQL database, those sort of things. I still continue to blog, um, blog on my website. If you'd love to uh, learn more about it, like please visit my website, dbnuggets.com, and you can subscribe to my um, website as well. And uh, you can also contact me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn and Twitter. But if you would like to contact me on LinkedIn, Deepti Goguri, type by my name, you'll find me. And I, it would be an honor to connect with you. Yeah, and 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 we'll uh, of course have all the information, the contact information, out on the Buckley Planet on the blog post and in the YouTube. And so, if you're listening in on the podcast, then head over to buckleyplanet.com. You can find the blog post and deep these info. So, thanks so much for your time, and uh, uh, hope to see you at one of these in real in world in person events, real world in person events. Thank you soon. so much, Christian, for having me today. It means a lot. Thank you. Wow!